Hi friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Jo Live and I'm going to start a new thing I'm going to call Reading Roundup. So this is kind of all a Doris doing Friday reads or Kim in middle of book, book March doing my bookish week kind of uh, a look. Maybe I'll do this once or twice, you know, like every week or every other week um, and kind of like what have I recently read? What am I currently reading? What do I imminently plan to read? Um, I really don't like doing monthly wrap ups. I just get like overwhelmed and have a terrible memory even for the books I've just read. And so trying to talk about something in an articulate way that I read three or four weeks ago just isn't going to happen. So uh, I stopped doing those and I mostly do vlogs at this point, which if you watch my channel, you know that, um, but not everybody's into vlogs. Sometimes they get kind of too long. Um, so I want to be able to talk about the books that I'm, yeah, just reading right now um, and be able to share those books and kind of my bookish life in smaller pieces. So what I have recently read, um, last week, I think last weekend, I finished Patrick's, Pastrick's, um, The Cranky Beautiful Faith of a Sinner and Saint by Nadia Boltz Weber. So if you can't tell, she's got lots of tattoos. She is a Lutheran pastor. Those two ne don't necessarily go together. And she has a great love of Jesus and didn't find herself fitting in in kind of like the typical Christian uh, aesthetic. And so she planted a church, she created a, a church where um, people who you know, maybe look like her don't look like or feel like the typical Christian would feel, feel comfortable and um, included um, in their faith and in the fellowship. Um, so I really liked kind of that part of it, her story and everything, but I just kind of felt like there was an overall message that wasn't there, kind of like cool story bro but what was the point a little bit so I give this one three stars um I did really enjoy it I was just looking for more from it particularly as I'm looking to enter into the chaplaincy and then just last night I finished The Shining by Stephen King um what's kind of, so I'd seen the movie um you know multiple times I feel like it's one of those movies where I'd never seen it from start to finish kind of it's on and so I would watch it and obviously as in the case of most things you know this is a 650 page book you get a lot more in the book than you get in the movie just for time's sake and I don't remember understanding or or being aware at all of what The Shining is and um how much the perspective is from Danny the son and uh also the theme of of alcoholism and uh, Jack the the dad Jack Nicholas character in the movie um is sober at the beginning of the movie and or the, the beginning of the book and alcohol keeps creeping up it's this repeated thing that ends up um really kind of taking hold by the end of it being part of the experience um of what's happening and essentially the hotel is like taking him over um, also, um, Dick, the, um, I think he's like, oh, he's the cook. Um, he's the cook of the hotel. The, the hotel shuts down. I'm like all over the place with this. The hotel shuts down over the winter because it's in Colorado, it's high elevation, and it's just like the roads aren't even open. So nobody's coming there over the winter. And so uh, Jack is there to be the caretaker over the winter, essentially like keep releasing the boiler to make sure the place doesn't blow up. And uh, just someone, someone to be there to keep the place up and running. Uh, so before he leaves, he's getting, you know, he's meeting the people that work there, finding out what he needs to be doing. And uh, particularly Danny, the son, has a really nice connection with, uh, with Dick Halloran, the, the cook. And they both sh share the shining or they have a shine and it's their ability to like hear other people's thoughts and it goes more into that but that becomes a big part of what ends up happening and so you're constantly questioning like are these things actually happening is this just in, in his head and then the hotel starts to like take over jack's mind and makes him very much not the person that he truly is and we end up with the you know all work and no play makes jack a dull boy that's, that line isn't actually in the, in the book. It's iconic in the movie, but it doesn't appear in the book. I was kind of waiting for it. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. It wasn't nearly as scary as I was expecting. So this was 
So I've read Misery. So, so far I haven't found anything that's like truly scary. Sorry, my dog shaking. I haven't found any Stephen King yet that's like truly scary to me. It's like creepy and haunting and stuff like that. Um, you know, Misery, uh, very different. It's not like a jump scare kind of thing. Uh, same thing with The Shining, maybe a little bit more. There's like one particular thing that's a little bit jump scary um, involving Room 217. But uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed this book and I'm looking forward to more Stephen King. <clears throat> and then a book that I'm um, borrowing from my friend, just a lot of stuff that I'm going on, going through right now. And um, I'm pausing for my dog scratching. Okay. I just paused for my dog scratching himself and jingling his collar. So a book that my friend just uh, loaned to me, she read it on a plane. Like she read it like straight through on a 10 hour flight. Uh, apparently she doesn't sleep on planes. And um, I'm going through a lot right now. And she thought that this is the like right, right book, right time for me. This is Crazy Love Overwhelmed by a Relentless God by Francis Chan. Oh, with Danae Yankowski. So essentially this is just about like the awesomeness of God and the crazy love that he has for us. So I'm um, getting close to halfway through this book and um, it's just one of those, it's kind of, yeah, right, right book, right time. And I've really kind of been struggling both in my relationship with God, that's like the arrows, like up and down the vertical relationship between you and God. And even in my relationships with my friends, feeling very transactional and um, like they're giving so much to me and I feel guilty all the time that I'm not giving more to them. Like I don't want them to be going through like a terrible time that they need my support, um, like kind of is going on with me in the other direction. But them showing me so much love and grace con constantly makes me feel like I need to do more. And that's kind of the relationship I've been having with God. And it really, it's the, it's my lack of, heart understanding of grace and what grace is it's undeserved blessing and i feel undeserving of these things i feel undeserving of other people's love and generosity and, and time and effort and all these things but like that's the point of grace i don't deserve it yet they bestow it on me chiefly god okay what do i plan to read. I'll start with my book club book, The Chunker Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I think I'm going to be doing this via audiobook. My other book club buddies are reading it or listening to it on audiobook. They said the Libby narration is really good. I had attempted this, there's a bookmark in there. I had attempted this probably three or four years ago, got a little way into it, <clears throat> and they just kind of got distracted and, and you know, shiny object syndrome so I ended up putting it down and not getting back to it but I just love this cover I saw another really pretty cover at Barnes and Noble the other day and I was like tempted I'm like no you have a beautiful edition just you know be happy with what you have so I'll probably be starting this today I plan on walking to the coffee shop in a little while um to hang out and um do some computer work probably some reading as well and so I think I'll start that on my walk And then the two, and then the two physical books that I plan on starting for this weekend, I'm going to keep the Stephen King train rolling. Oh, speaking of train, we've got a train um, bridge there. This is the body. This is the story that Stand By Me, the movie came from. And um, I've actually been on the bridge and it's in Santa Cruz, um, a little ways up from the Santa Cruz boardwalk, where in the movie that this train, um, bridge is and they're the trains coming and they're running from the bridge and they have to like grab onto the the slat and like hang from the bottom of it so um yeah and it's a nice it's a nice shorty and then finally oh the buy one get one 50 percent off sticker is still on there this is within arm's reach by ann napolitano she's the author author of dear edward and hello beautiful is her most recent one this is her debut I loved Dear Edward so much. It's one of those books, as I said before, I don't have a great recall for um, for books that I've read. And a lot of times I can love a book in the moment. It's like, you know, four, four and a half, maybe even five stars. And then two weeks later, I'm like, what was that about? <laughs> like, you know, I have a good basic idea, but I couldn't tell you 
a whole lot about it, but Dear Edward is one that was sticky. And I still think about that book. There's a series now, I think it's on Apple TV Plus that I want to, uh, I want to watch, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, so this one, I remind myself what this one was about, um, an unforgettable story of three generations of a large Irish Catholic family. So that's kind of all I know about. I haven't even read the full, the full synopsis because that's kind of all I want to read, but I just think this is a beautiful cover. And uh, yeah, I'm just getting, looking forward to starting this this weekend. So these are the books. So these are the books that are currently in my life. Have you read any of these or are you interested in any of these? What is your favorite Stephen King? As I feel like I'm in my Stephen King era. Thank you for watching. Remember, every day is a great day for a great day, no matter what.